we interrupt this program to talk about the elephant in the room. No, I don't mean the actual elephant in my room. Can I put this away now? I mean money. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I make videos on financial literacy and well-being and if that sounds like something that you may be interested in, please subscribe below and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time that I post. In today's video, I wanted to chat with you about how to budget and save money. For those of you who haven't watched my latest video, I managed to save 80% of my income last year. <laughs> So I thought that some of you may be interested to learn exactly how I did that and how to save money through a very simple and very practical budget. Now, this is gonna be a step-by-step -step exercise. We're gonna do this together, okay? So I have my own piece of paper right here. You don't need anything fancy, okay? So pause this video, go grab a piece of paper and let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're actually gonna start by thinking about what our monthly income is. And when I say monthly income, I mean after tax monthly income. We don't get to see the tax money, so we're not gonna worry about it, all right? So let's Let's think about the after-tax income. Okay, so for this example, we're gonna use $2,000, which is what most people are getting on the emergency benefit, at least in Canada. Thank you, emergency benefit lords. And also as a rule of thumb, I just wanna mention that you should always round up your expenses and round down your income per month. So use that when you're thinking about these numbers as we go along in the exercise. Okay, now that we have that value down on paper, we're gonna move into essential spending. And honestly, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video, it is firstly to smash that like button. And secondly, the difference between essential and non-essential spending. Essential spending is spending that is paramount to your living. And what I mean by this is that you need it in order to have a roof over your head, in order to eat, and in order to work, okay? And I like to categorize essential spending into seven categories. And these are living expenses, utilities, food, transportation, healthcare, education, and debt repayments. I also have some thoughts on how you can actually save on essential spending. So if you'd like to see a video on that, just comment down below and I'll be sure to cover it in my next video. All right, so let's start with living expenses. And for living expenses, we're gonna write down amounts that you spend on rent and mortgage. In my case, my rent was $900 this year because I was sharing a one bedroom apartment with a roommate. And this was definitely one of my best financial decisions of this year because one bedroom apartments in my city actually go for about $2,200 and I was able to get you know, sharing it with one roommate, but I was still able to get something close to work, walking distance for $900. Fantastic investment. Now, if you have a mortgage, in addition to taking into account your monthly mortgage payments, I also want you to think about the maintenance that you're paying for your house and also any insurance that you have on your house. And of course, property taxes. Generally speaking, your living expenses should be about 30% of your income per month. So if you're noticing that this value is higher than that, this is an area in which you can obviously make some improvements. Okay, step number two, we're gonna write down the amount that we're paying on utilities per month. And when I say utilities, I actually just mean gas, water, electricity, Wi-Fi, and your phone bill. Okay, don't forget about your phone bill. For me, this value is $50 for utilities and about $50 for my phone bill for a total of $100. Step number three, we're gonna write down how much we're paying for food every month. And when I say food, I just mean groceries. I do not want you to take into account any outings with your friends or restaurant visits or anything else, just groceries, okay? We're keeping this very essential, very basic. This was about $150 per month for me. Next up, we have transportation. In my case, like I mentioned before, I was living very close to work before the quarantine, so I was actually walking to work. My transportation per month was actually about $20, but write down whatever that amount is for you. And if you own a car, your expense per month should include not just your gas, but also any lease payments that you have, any maintenance for the car, and also insurance, okay? Now, fifth up, we have healthcare. Now, if you're lucky enough to live in a country where you do not have to pay for your healthcare, then your value here is likely zero. But if you are not and you have have monthly expenses for seeing your doctor or for medication or anything else, write down whatever that value is. Okay, number six, we have education. Ah, good old education, taking my money since 2011. Now, if you watch my last video, you know that I actually paid off my education debt. <laughs> But if you're not at that point yet in your life and you're still paying tuition or whatever else, write down whatever that amount is for you and know that I sympathize. And finally, number seven. We made it guys, we are here at number seven. This is your debt repayments. If you're paying back your debt on a monthly basis, then write down whatever this amount is for you. Once again, for me, this value is zero. Okay, so if you made it to this point, give yourself a pat on the back. 
because the worst is actually over. We have some values to work with and we can actually start to look at these numbers and figure out how to save money. And there's two ways that you're gonna use this budget. At least these are two ways that I use my budget. Firstly, you're gonna figure out which values look a little bit too high for your liking, okay? Like I mentioned before, your living expenses should only be about 30% of your monthly income. If they're higher than that, that's a value to flag and to think about ways in which you can minimize it. And secondly, you can also use this value to figure out how much you can realistically save per month. Now that we've taken care of our essential spending, we can focus on saving and non-essential spending. And looking at these numbers on my paper, a value that I'd be comfortable saving on a monthly basis would be about 50% of this, which is about $415. But we're all in different seasons of life, so I encourage you to look at your own value and kind of figure out what percentage you'd be comfortable saving out of this. And now once you've figured out how much you want to save a month, I encourage you to do the following. I want you to start paying yourself first. This is something that I mentioned in one of my last videos as well. And it's a very important concept that very few people actually employ. The concept of paying yourself first is very simple. Essentially, every time you get a check or money is deposited in your bank account, you're going to take the percentage that we just talked about. So in my case, that would be $415. I'm going to take it out of that paycheck and just put it in my savings account and don't look at it. Don't touch it. Do not pay anything else. Do not pay any bills before you do this. This is your savings. This is money for future you. And I encourage you to give paying yourself first a shot because what I have realized is that it actually encourages me to save actively instead of having savings as an afterthought after I've paid everybody else in the world and forgot about paying myself. And the rest of the $415 will be my discretionary spending this month. And what I mean by that is subscription services. I know this is a big one. Subscription services are discretionary in my opinion. Any restaurant outings, any hangouts with my friends, any clothes that I buy, accessories, etc. I think you get the point of essential versus non-essential spending by now. But honestly, starting to think of my spending in this way really changed my approach to my finances and I encourage you to give this a shot. Okay, you guys, if you found this video helpful, I really hope that you can give it a like and also share it with your friends and family and anybody else who might be interested in learning about this. I think it's a very easy way to budget and it's also very effective. If you have any other tips and tricks that you employ, please comment down below and let us know because this is the learning channel and I want us to learn from each other, okay? Thanks very much for watching. Have a safe day. Bye, guys.